Hey, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm here with Ryan Puffer from the Azure management team. And we're here to talk about Azure Arc enabled servers and how you can manage and govern your server in your hybrid environment using Azure. So stay tuned. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm really well. How are you? Doing great, doing great. It's an honor to have you here uh, on this show. Um, so you are part of the Azure management team. Um, so can you tell me a little bit what you're working on? Definitely. I work on a product called Azure Arc, and that is kind of a group of services that we are uh, working on to go and help you manage your hybrid assets from Azure. I specifically work on the server aspect, so being able to manage your Windows and Linux servers that are running on premises or in another cloud, perhaps. Okay, that is awesome. I think I have the right person here because many of our viewers obviously are wondering, like, how can they leverage Azure to make their on-premises environment, that their hybrid environment, even better um, uh, using actually Azure itself, right? But without moving everything to Azure, so. Since I have the right person here, um, what are we going to have a look at in this session? Yeah, so we're going to start by talking about kind of why Azure Arc came to be, what problems we're trying to solve with it. And then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the architecture so we can understand why is it designed the way it is? What are we trying to accomplish with the way we set it up? And then we'll go through a demo of how it works and talk about how for you as an IT professional, where is ARC going to help you simplify your management and monitoring experiences? Oh, that sounds that sounds awesome. So before we actually dive into all of that, like I know that we have a couple of viewers who probably heard like Azure Arc, like the name before, but actually didn't really know what it addresses and why we actually created it and what it is. Um, I mean, we're going very deep into uh, what we actually what it actually is and what it allows us to do. But can you explain a little bit like why we why we do have it and and what's the what's the reason why we actually why you were working on that? Definitely. So you know Azure Arc came from you know, our long-standing approach of making sure that hybrids included in our cloud strategy. We always know customers are going to be running some stuff on prem, perhaps for our next couple of years, perhaps forever, depending on you know variety of regulatory and internal policies. And so we're trying to find solutions that help bridge the gap. We don't want you to feel like you have a cloud team that only does cloud stuff, which is really cool and modern. And then you have your legacy stuff on prem that's you know, kind of just been the same for the last 10 years. We can do better. And we know that the bridge there is really to enable you to use the same tools across hybrid and in Azure. So the idea of Azure Arc is to be able to go and take your stuff that's running on prem or in another cloud and make it show up in Azure. And by having a representation of your server in Azure, you can start seeing everything in one spot. You can use the same tools and processes to manage all of your servers. And then from there, you'll be able to start adopting modern management practices for these assets, which you know, are not necessarily running in the cloud. Oh, that's awesome. So actually, like if I understood that correctly, you basically can use these modern management technologies we have in Azure and actually like take resources or servers in that case, which are living outside of Azure, doesn't matter if they're on-prem or if they're running even at another cloud provider and basically put bridge them, as you said, into Azure and start using like uh, managing them as they would be Azure resources. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I know, obviously, since you're behind that feature, especially when you work on that, I'm sure you can tell me a little bit more about how that works and like uh, what the architecture on that is. Yeah, let's head over to uh, architecture slide here and talk through, you know, what does it really mean to be part of Azure? So it's kind of a busy screen. I'll walk you through it piece by piece. But the main thing we want to do is make sure that you can see and control that server from Azure. And the Azure control plane is this box here in the middle called Azure Resource Manager. It's really where any action you ask us to do in Azure is going to be routed through. So for example, if you asked us to provision a VM for you in our data center, that request comes through the portal or command line, 
through Azure Resource Manager where we have a common set of experiences to control things like access and security, being able to govern it with policy and ensure it's set up correctly, you know, template deployments so you can group everything you need for an end-to-end -end product together, and of course, being able to tag, organize, and search for all those resources. So ARM is kind of the brain of Azure, and after it you know, makes all of its checks, keeps track of everything you've got going, it'll go off and uh, you know, provision that VM for you or do whatever it is you asked Azure to do on your behalf. And it's a very cloud native experience. You know, when you think of the cloud, you think of point, click, go, uh, being able to automate things with uh, scripts. And the beauty of the cloud is since we control the whole stack, meaning the physical hardware on which the machine is running, you know, the network, the configuration around that machine, we make it really easy for you to onboard anything that's in Azure Resource Manager to uh, management services, which is kind of a broad grouping of all these kind of value add things we have, like being able to monitor the logs on your machine, managing updates, securing it with Azure Defender. And it's very easy to connect those to things in Azure because we know about everything. We can just ask Azure Resource Manager, how many uh, resources do you have? Are any of them not being monitored? And if we find any, we can just say, hey, Resource Manager, please go and turn on monitoring for that machine. They can go route that request. But when we think about hybrid stuff, you know, it's kind of uh, sitting in your environment, whether that's a data center you own uh, or another cloud provider, you got some existing tools that can go and manage those resources. Uh, but you know, in the end, it's, it's still you, it's still your company. You still wanna manage it the same way. And we have a ton of hybrid services today. So that top box of like monitoring and update management those all work on-prem today. You can go and use those with these uh, existing servers you have, but it's not that same one-click experience because Azure is not aware of them. You have to kind of opt into the management uh, for each individual service, and after that, everything else lights up. So the idea of Azure Arc is, well, how do we make the experience the same? And we do that by taking these resources, running in your environments, and projecting them into Azure Resource Manager. And by that, I mean, we're making a representation, like a metadata of your server in Azure that we can kind of reference and provide these same controls and connections with that Azure native virtual machines already have. Okay, that is, that is pretty cool. Like, so I, I remember the times, like when we were like started with Azure, where we had like, it was called Azure Service Management, I think, the management service management API. And it, we start to have a lot of Azure resources and it was became very difficult to manage all of that, like to have actually organized them and you just ended up with these huge lists. And then this cool kit came around the corner, which was like Azure Resource Manager. Uh, which also obviously then was the kind of like new portal as well. For a lot of people, it was just a new portal as they were thinking of, but it was actually the whole logic for it and really helped us managing resources at scale. And what you're now telling me is that with Azure Arc, I can basically use the same Azure Resource Manager to manage resources which are actually not hosted in Azure at all. So that is that is pretty cool. Definitely, yeah. And so, you know, we make it really easy as well when you're in the portal or using the command line to manage your Azure subscription, you know, we'll denote that, hey, this is a server not running in Azure. So, you know, some of the capabilities might be different, but, uh, you know, everything uh, we're trying to provide here about management services should be just the same as if it were a native Azure resource. Okay, that is cool. So I can use like tagging, as you mentioned, and all that. And like, it looks like it really feels like that. Yeah, that's already very cool. Like for, especially for inventory and stuff like that, even like this is, this is awesome. Definitely. And when we think about, you know, the IT pros trying to upskill and keep up with the current technology, it's also a great opportunity for them to be able to learn how to work with the cloud, even though the day-to-day -day management they're doing might still be on-prem. Okay. That makes sense. So I can actually like use Azure to manage resources, which again, like I work, I'm basically working with my uh, service in my data center, but I actually use man Azure to manage them and organize them and whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Awesome. So, you know, getting it projected in 
uh, you know, sounds interesting. What does it mean to have metadata about that server in Azure? And you know, the reality is we need to kind of have a bi-directional communication. So it's more than just telling Azure that there is a server somewhere else. We need to be able to actually go and talk to that server so that we can actually manage it from the cloud. And so let's dive a little bit deeper into how this is all kind of implemented. So at a high level, all of the Azure Arc products, uh, which means you know, Arc for servers, which manages Windows and Linux, Arc for Kubernetes, which manages Kubernetes clusters, et cetera, we're all agent-based, meaning that you install an agent on your server or Kubernetes cluster and connect that with Azure. And that connection process is your authorization to say, I would like to have my server placed in this Azure resource group and subscription, and I would like to be able to manage it from the cloud. And from there, we have a connection from Azure, our resource provider, which actually has all the logic of what to do with this machine on premises, and the agent on premises, which actually can go and uh, perform actions on behalf of uh, the uh, requests you make in Azure. And a key point I want to drive here is, you know, it's a very lightweight agent. The entire goal of it is to connect it to Azure. So it's not trying to replace anything you already have. It's really just trying to bring that end-to-end -end management and cohesive experience that you have with Azure VMs to the on-premises world. So all those existing tools and processes you've already invested in, you can keep using those, that's totally fine. We're just enabling you to make it easier if you want to use Azure services on that machine to be able to do all that from the cloud and not have to go sign into those servers or use local management tools to go and onboard them to Azure services. Okay, that is that is handy. Also good to know, like <laughs> that is there's no, like I don't need to replace all the tools I'm currently using because I'm, in many cases, they're working, right? I'm using them for years probably. I know they're working to manage my stuff, but obviously there are some gaps. And so I can actually start using both at the same time to actually fill out, fill out, fill those gaps, right? So that's cool. Definitely. And so I actually want to take one quick sidestep of, all right, so we have metadata about the machine. We have an agent. What is it, what can Azure do to a server instance running you know, anywhere? Uh, and you know, in our case, that since it's agent-based, you can really install this on physical machines, virtual machines, Windows, Linux. We don't really care. As long as you can install the agent, then you can start managing it with Azure. So I want to quickly step over to uh, the Azure portal and talk about Azure VMs for a second. What does it mean to be an Azure VM? And so if you go and ask us to provision a VM for you, there's really two distinct attributes that make it an Azure VM. One. It's running on our hardware. Somewhere in the world, one of our data centers, your machine is consuming you know, memory, CPU, power resources. On the second level, it has that deep connection into Azure to do things like if you go on the, the side here, you'll see all these great tools available to go and enhance that machine. We have this concept of like extensions, which allow you to go push down software onto the machine or run scripts on it. And that makes easy onboarding for a ton of other Azure management services that you see here on the left. And that's all possible because of uh, agent running in each of these VMs. It's part of the template that you get when you deploy the VM uh, called the Azure VM guest agent. And that agent is just responsible for handling requests to, for example, run uh, a new agent on that machine for monitoring purposes, or run a script on your behalf, reset your password. It's kind of the, the connection point for a lot of the you know, UX experiences you see here, where those actions have to take place inside an operating system. So when we think about Arc, we have a representation of that server in Azure. We need to manage that server. Well, our agent is doing the same thing as that Azure VM agent. And so if we head back to our architecture, what we actually do inside the agent is three different uh, tasks. So when you think of the Arc Connected Machine Agent, it has three functions. The first one is called the Hybrid Instance Metadata Service. Now, this is doing a couple different things. Uh, first, it is doing all the syncing with Azure. 
So we don't collect a lot of data from your machine. We really only know your host name, uh, your fully qualified domain name, operating system name and version. That's about it. We don't collect much. Um, but we use this agent on the server to go and regularly sync that information with Azure. Now in the reverse direction, we also pull some information from Azure to your machine. So for example, if you go and tag your machine in Azure, you can use this uh, agent will go and sync those down and it exposes an API that any app on that machine can call to ask about the Azure representation of itself. So if you wanted to know what tags are associated with you, you can just call an API that's hosted by the hybrid instance metadata service and get that information. Similarly, you'll get your resource ID in Azure, what uh, you know, physical data center that metadata is being stored in, uh, et cetera. Now, if you're familiar with IMDS from Azure VMs, it's the same. So we re-implemented an existing service that is you know, natively part of the Azure fabric on premises so that apps on your machine think they're in Azure. They can have a very similar experience even though they're running on-prem. One of the great capabilities of that though means that we're able to take Azure Active Directory managed identities and bring them on-prem. So in addition to providing metadata about the server, every ARC server also gets a unique AAD identity assigned to it. And so if you are writing an app that has to go talk to other Azure services, uh, whether you know that's a storage account or Key Vault, well, now instead of actually having to put a password in your code, uh, you can use the managed identity and just make a request to the endpoint and say, hey, I need a token to go talk to an Azure storage account. And we will use the identity for that machine. We take care of the password. You don't ever see it. You don't have to worry about it and you'll get a token to go and reach out to the other Azure service. So that alone is really exciting for the app developers who are trying to figure out how do we better secure apps on-prem? So if you are an app developer working with Azure services to build your end-to-end -end app, this alone is gonna be a huge uh, new capability for you to leverage. All right, this is, this is awesome because again, like when you, when you build these apps like and when you start using azure for um for example let's say as you said as a good a great example you want to have access to a storage account right you have a server which does some uploads for example do a to a storage account like without the managed identity i basically always had to like somehow store a password in a script file or somehow like um obviously there are ways of doing that but it was like every time a lot of effort and super annoying. And I'm sure security doesn't have much fun <laughs> when we do that. Um, so with that, we get already the benefit of having like that mentioned identity. And I think a lot of people underestimate that. So that is, that is pretty cool. Definitely. And then the next part of our agent uh, is called guest configuration. And this is all about being able to govern your machine from Azure. So Azure has a service called Azure Policy, which is constantly working with Azure Resource Manager to help you determine whether your resources are meeting your own standards. And those might be you know, regulatory standards, they might be internal policies that you've published, and it could be any kind of setting. So it could be making sure that your machines are tagged correctly, like every resource has to have a department associated with it or a cost center. It could be, Every machine needs to have its logs sent so that we can monitor it for security risks. Um, and a subset of those policies are actually checking OS and software settings. So things like, what is the password setting configuration on my server? Or do I allow uh, SSH connections from users without passwords, that kind of thing. Uh, anything operational or security that you have to go inside the computer to actually ask it. You can't just look at the metadata about the machine in Azure. Well, we include the Azure Policy Guest Configuration Agent in the ARC agent. So every ARC server is able to be monitored and governed through Azure Policy. Today, that is an audit-only experience, but we are working hard to enable remediation as well. So you can imagine kind of a future where you'll be able to uh, define your IT policies in Azure once, and it will be able to apply to any of your resources, whether they're in Azure and another cloud or on-prem. 
So that sounds a little bit like group policies on steroids to me. This is like, I can use that and do my all my, like basically my policies across all my servers, doesn't matter where they're running. Um, so one thing I have to ask though, it, I mean, this sounds awesome, especially when you, when you speak about regulatory uh, stuff as well, but do I need to write all these policies by myself or like, like, because that seems to be a lot, that was usually a lot of work, right? Creating all these GPOs usually and finding out the settings. Um, do we, do I need to do that by myself or is there anything which helps me? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have a pretty extensive library of built-in policies that cover a lot of common scenarios we see. And we'll do a demo later and kind of show a few of those. Um, but they cover things like security settings, like making sure your password policy is secure, uh, as well as operational things like, do you have any certificates that are about to expire on the server? Um, additionally, we have tooling available to take existing group policies you might have spent time authoring and converting those into Azure policies. So if you want kind of a centralized uh, monitoring console to go see group policy compliance for both domain joined and non-domain joined servers. Well, you can use Azure Policy as your audit mechanism for that. And that way, in case you're applying settings through different means, you'll still be able to see all the compliance results in a single place. And then lastly, you know, if there is something custom that you just uh, can't find already, or you really found a new setting you want to test, awesome. It's a flexible framework. Under the hood, it's running PowerShell DSC on Windows, Chef Inspect on Linux. And as long as you can write a script, to go and test for the presence or configuration of a setting, but well, you can turn that into an Azure policy and get those compliance results in an hour or less. Okay, wow. So, so you're not just we're not just providing people, and I want to make sure that everyone heard that because that was really like something I want to highlight. So, it's not just that we built like built give you built-in policies and you can create your own policies. There's also tooling available, like so for if I have already GPOs to actually convert these to these Azure guest configuration policies. Okay, so yep. this is this is okay. I, I'm I'm sure that not a, not a lot of people have heard of like that conversion tooling. So that is great stuff. Definitely, and yeah. we're excited to see where it goes. I think this is going to be a, a a great tool for customers who are you know starting their journey towards more cloud native policy and governance. Uh, obviously, it's a long journey. Group policy has been around longer than some IT admins. <laughs> um, so uh, it's uh, a step in the right direction for sure. Awesome. And then the last component of our agent. So we talked about identity and metadata sync. We talked about policy and governance with guest configuration. The last one is extension manager. So I mentioned how Azure VMs have the ability to push down agents and run scripts on the machine without actually having to log into them. Well, we're bringing that same exact functionality with the same extensions on-prem. And so that means if you want to think about uh, you know, onboarding a server to other services, a lot of Azure management services collect log data to make their analysis. So for example, Azure Automation, Azure Monitoring, Security Center, Sentinel, they need log data to be able to understand the current state of your machine. Now, those are all usually using the log analytics agent or the forthcoming Azure monitor agent uh, to go and collect those logs. You could install that separately today on-prem. That's uh, been supported for many years now. Uh, but we offer you the ability to go right to the portal and say, hey, I really want to monitor this machine. Can you just install that for me and configure it? Because I don't want to have to sign into that machine and do it myself. And so the extension manager is the piece responsible for downloading the latest version of those agents configuring it with the right settings that you specified uh, on the Azure side, and then reporting back whether or not that was successful on your machine. And so we have a variety of extensions available today, uh, everything from monitoring to being able to run your own scripts or desired state configuration files to being able to sync certificates down to your servers. And we're going to keep expanding what extensions are available. So if you have one that you love, and you don't see it available on ARC yet, just uh, reach out uh, to us. I'm sure uh, we can uh, look into making that happen and uh, definitely keep an eye on what new capabilities are coming out on our uh, blog as well. Awesome. 
No, uh, this is this is great stuff. So now, obviously, you showed us a little bit how that all works, um, uh, basically on on like the on the architecture side. I want to see that live. So um, you were speaking about the agent and and how you actually like how do I actually add a server and all that. So can you show yeah. me that a little bit? Definitely. So let's head over to the portal. So this is our Azure VM. We're done with that. We're in the hybrid mode. So let's take a look at this resource group here where I have a couple ARC resources. So ARC resources, you'll also quickly see right away, they have a different type, uh, server Azure ARC, um, and they've got this purple icon with a blue ring. Most of the ARC things are gonna have that blue ring underneath to help you figure out what's hybrid uh, very quickly and visually. Uh, but let's go and open up my web server here. So this is a machine running on my server here in Boston. And you'll see right away, we have given it a very similar portal experience to an Azure VM. So previously for hybrid servers, you know, this was uh, every service you chose to onboard a hybrid server to, you kind of had to jump between them to get all the data from them because there was no representation or common identifier of that server in Azure. Whereas an ARC server gets an Azure resource ID, we can link all of your data together and say, hey, this machine is using all of these services we can pull all of that together in the portal. So you as a server admin can come here and see all the information relevant to you about the state of your server. And so you'll see, you know, this machine's got a couple tags already set to help me organize and find my resources. The agent has been sending heartbeats up every five minutes to just check in and see if there's anything that needs to happen. Uh, and then from here, you know, we make it really easy to onboard to the other Azure services, which can help you manage these hybrid assets. So this is kind of what it looks like for an existing machine. Getting to this point and installing the agent is really easy. So if we head up to the top and we head over to Azure Arc, we can go to servers, add, and we've got a wizard here that will kind of walk you through what it's going to take. You know, in general, it's three steps. You got to install our agent, and then you have to configure it with Azure, and then you smile because it's all done. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so, so go ahead. can you quickly go back to that? I sort of don't don't try now. I don't want to interrupt you, but this this was also like interesting to me. I mean, we were speaking about that agent uh, for quite a bit, and um, I know that like a lot of people need to deal with firewall rulings and stuff like that. So this is interesting. It says here like I need to have an HTTPS connection to Azure, right? So it's a uh, 443 connection. So that doesn't mean I need to have like full internet access. I can actually limit it, that connection or how does that like, what actually do I need there? Yeah, that's a great point. So obviously, you know, in the Azure world, everything is communicating internally uh, from an Azure VM to uh, all the services running underneath. But on-prem, you know, since we don't control your entire environment, uh, we expose our service as any other Azure service with a public endpoint. And, you know, as far as what you need to be able to manage it with Arc, uh, it's outbound access only. We're never going to reach into your network. Uh, the agent's always sending a heartbeat and asking it what to do. And we publish a list of the endpoints which you'd need to allow. Uh, if you have a proxy server, we do support those. And very shortly, we will also support private links. So if you don't want to open your machine to the internet and uh, you need a private connection into Azure, you have Express Route set up, well, we'll be able to do ARC over that as well so that all the communication can happen uh, off the public internet. But you know, for the average user, this is all happening over secured uh, you know, TLS protected uh, sessions over the internet. So if that's an option for your servers, that's gonna be your easiest way to get started. Okay. Okay. So it sounds fairly simple and fairly like secure in a way that I don't need to just like open up random internet access for, for these servers. No, that's awesome. Good. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. That's a great question. And just one other point on that, you know, if you do manage the firewall, um, you know, we do publish what we call service tags in Azure. Those are groups of IP addresses allocated to each service. So we have our own service tag for Azure Arc. And so if you're managing that firewall and you only want to allow access to just those Azure services you're currently using, well, we'll give you that list of IPs you need to grant access to. So a lot of capabilities there if you need to go and lock things down in your environment. So yes, we will assume at this point 
that we've already done that part and internet connection is available. I just got a server, I need to go on board. The next step is where are you gonna make that server show up? So you pick the subscription or resource group. This is just like any other resource um, that you would have in Azure. Uh, I'm gonna go find my resource group here. So we're gonna put it in the Arc demo. Uh, next up, you pick a region. Now, this is very important. The region of an Arc server is just where do you want the metadata for that machine in Azure to reside? So it's just for data residency purposes. It doesn't have to match physically where that server is. It is just where you want us to keep like that machine name uh, and OS uh, type and version. Uh, next up, of course, Windows or Linux. This is really just changing the onboarding script at the end. And if you have a proxy server, you know, go ahead and let us know. Um, now, I mentioned that the region doesn't necessarily have to match where it's physically located. So we provide some suggested tags to add so that you can help organize your resources more accurately for these hybrid ones. So, you know, for um, your data center, you might pick uh, your uh, whatever internal name you're using for that, you know, your city, mine's in Boston. And of course, you can add any custom tags you want. And you don't have to add them all now. You can, of course, modify these over time or automatically with policy. And the outcome of this is, you know, it looks like a lot here, but it's it's really just a script that's going to go and download the latest version of the agent. It installs it and uh, then goes and connects it to Azure. Now, in the default setup, uh, this is kind of for a test environment. So if you're setting up your first machine, when you get to this step here where it says, yeah, let's connect this machine. And you'll see those the information we asked earlier is just being passed on the command line. We're just saying, here's where we want to put it in the tags we asked to add. Um, the next step it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to log in as yourself. And that's the authorization step. Someone with access to that resource group has to be able to say that you're allowed to connect to it. Um, and so in the default case, you would just sign in uh, in your browser and just say, yep, let's go and add this server and off you go. Now that obviously doesn't scale to the uh, enterprise-wide scenario. So when you get to the pre-production and production rollouts, there's two additional parameters you can add to provide a, a service principle for at scale onboarding. Now we mentioned earlier, you know, putting passwords in files, not the greatest. Um, this is kind of a, a chicken and egg problem. We need somehow to prove that you're allowed to get into Azure before we can stop using uh, passwords on-prem. And to help you mitigate the risks of that, we have a built-in Azure role-based access control uh, profile that is very limited. It's called the Azure Connected Machine Onboarding Role. And all it lets you do is onboard new ARC servers. So when you create that service account and you say, hey, this is going to be the one we use to onboard to Azure, but you can just assign the role to the resource group or subscription where you're going to put those servers. And you can even set the you know, lifetime of the secret to be just you know, a day, two days, however long it's going to take you to roll out. And then uh, you know, use whatever automation tooling you have today on premises to go and push this agent out and onboard all of them to Azure. Yeah. Okay. That that sounds like much more fun if you need to onboard like hundreds or thousands of servers and then just logging in on each of these servers. Yeah. Yes. For sure. And yeah, once that's done, you know, your server will show up in Azure, and we kind of think of Arc as the agent to manage other agents. We want this to be the only one that you actually had to go and get on that machine, and from here you can do everything straight from the cloud. So let's head back over to that server and you know, take a look at what that means. Awesome. So we're back on this uh, you know, front end server here. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do. And I want to start first with extensions. Uh, these are really powerful because they really take a lot of the management of keeping things up to date and installed uh, you know, agent wise. Uh, it makes it a whole lot simpler. So you'll see here, I've got four different extensions deployed to this machine already. You know, it's very easy to see what version's installed. You could, of course, query for this information in the Azure resource graph if you wanted to go and compare across all your machines, what versions are installed. Um, but you know, I have the monitoring agent installed. I have the insights agent installed. And we'll take a look at what that means in a, a minute or two. I've got a security center agent and then a key fault one. 
And I didn't have to sign into the server for any of these. I just, you know, you can go here, you can click add. You'll see I got a couple options. If you wanted to actually go and configure the roles on this server, awesome. PowerShell DSC can help with that. And so you could actually go here and say, look, I've defined the configuration of my web server and browse to that uh, DSC script, uh, provide any you know, optional arguments, and we'll take care of downloading it to that server uh, and initializing the configuration on it so that the machine is set up as you expect. So a lot of flexibility here with extensions. And you know, as we go forward, especially in like the monitoring world, the new Microsoft monitoring agent known as Azure Monitor Agent is going to be extension based. So uh, we're really going all in on this model because it makes it a whole lot easier to manage and keep things up to date when it can all be done right from the Azure portal, wherever you happen to be, whether there's a coffee shop or in your data center, uh, not actually have to sign in and use you know, your local management tools to do the same. Awesome. And you know, next up, the other big capability we talked about with ARC is policy. So, you know, policy is uh, really flexible. You'll see here, I've got a couple different policies already applied to this machine. We're looking at the scope for a single machine. So if I were the admin of this particular server, this screen is telling me that overall, there is at least one policy that's non-compliant. So, you know, someone might come yelling at me soon. And I go down this list, you'll see, of course, you know, I've got plenty that are compliant, but three of these are not. And you, know, you can drill in and figure out exactly why a machine may or may not be compliant. You'll see here, I've got one here, audit machines with the insecure password security settings. That's one of those built-in policies. You know, we've got, uh, it has a bunch of sub policies that it's checking, like, you know, making sure you have maximum password age, minimum password age, preventing reuse. And you'll see compliance for each of those uh, different metrics that we're looking at uh, when you drill in through this view. And you know, as a server admin, now I know what I need to do to go be compliant with you know, what my central IT security organization is asking me to. We also have you know, operational ones. So I mentioned earlier, we have policies for checking like if certificates are expiring. And policies generally are parameterized so this policy, when I assigned it, I said, you know, for me, 60 days is when I want to be warned. Because at, at that point, there is risk of the service going down and I need to have time to actually go get the new certificate created and actually go and push that out. So uh, I set this up, I deployed it, and you'll see this machine is non-compliant because I have a certificate there that I think it's already actually expired. Um, and so that tells me I, Something's going to go wrong very soon or already has. I need to go take a look. I think that is a very, very useful policy for, for many, many people out there. Because again, like if you manage all your certificates, um, like it happens from time to time that people forget that they need to renew the certificates. So yep. <laughs> <very> <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then, you know, there's also ones that talk about integration with Azure. So um, let's take a look at this one here. Enable Azure Monitor for VMs. The last two policies were looking at settings inside the OS. They use guest configuration. Some policies work on the metadata, the representation of that server in Azure. And so this one says, I want to make sure all my uh, servers, no matter where they're running, Azure or out of Azure, are being monitored by Azure Monitor. And as we mentioned earlier, Azure Monitor is kind of the gateway to a lot of different tools in Azure. Uh, you know, you'll get your update status from Azure Monitor. You can enable Azure Defender for servers that reads the data from there, Sentinel to go uh, query across your security events. And so this one has policies here that says, hey, look, my uh, you know, Windows Arc machines and also my Linux ones need to have the log analytics agent deployed. And so what it's doing is it's actually checking the metadata on the server and it says, hey, do you have that log analytics extension deployed? And that you know, tells us whether or not the agent's installed. Uh, and if not, it will actually go and trigger a deployment for you so that you can automatically have these machines onboarded to that agent with a standard configuration that's set in the policy so you don't Nobody has to actually know the workspace ID and the onboarding key 
that's just part of the policy. Uh, and it will automatically go ahead and push that out to the servers. If you find a server that, you know, for whatever reason, someone went and uninstalled that extension and it shows up as non-compliant, you can just create a remediation task and you don't have to worry about what it's doing. You can just like, hey, I, I'm non-compliant. I don't know why. Um, can you fix that for me? And since it's modifying the Azure resource, uh, it's able to go and just say, oh, yeah, I'll just go deploy the extension again and uh, bring you back into compliance. Okay, that is that is cool because so that does like if I understand that correctly, I could also sign like um, like set that policy, let's say on a resource group level or let's say on a subscription level. And so as soon as I join a new Arc enabled server um, to that specific resource group or subscription, uh, it will then like have a look at the, that policy at one point, and then it will say, "Hey, you need to have that Azure Monitor um, uh, extension enabled," and then we'll just like enable that. You got it. Okay. And you know that's a great point because since this affects any brand new server you onboard, you can really define a lot of the configuration of the server through policy. So the ones we've been talking about so far are built-in policies, but you can also, as I mentioned, write your own custom policies. And so I want to talk about a really cool one uh, that I created for this demo here, which is to leverage the Azure Key Vault extension, which is able to go and synchronize certificates from a Key Vault in Azure to your server. So on Windows, it puts it in a search store. On Linux, it drops it to a well-known directory, or you can change the directory if you have a preferred one. And use this to help simplify that certificate management. So we have a policy to go say, hey, you got stuff expiring, but we also have the tools to enable you to prevent that from happening. So the idea here is let's make Key Vault the central place where we manage the certs. It's nice and secure. The agent, which is again deployed as an extension, leverages the unique Azure Active Directory managed identity of that server to go reach out to Key Vault and grab the certificates that you asked to be synced to that server. So you have a nice secure end-to-end -end connection. Key Vault still has access policies that control which ARC servers can actually request and use those certificates. But this policy here is written kind of from the uh, more of a, like a DevOps perspective. So I said, uh, when I define this policy, find me ARC servers that have a specific tag. And if they have that tag, go and deploy these certificates. So let me go look at the assignment here. Uh, so, you know, I'm doing a web app in this demo. So uh, I want to make sure that my TLS certificates are being sent down. So my parameters are very simple. It's, hey, what are the certificates we need to sync? You can provide more than one. They don't have to be in the same key vault. And what tag are we going to use to decide for automatic deployment? And so I said, search and config and uh, www.prod is uh, the value. And so that means if we back out of here and look at the server, I applied that tag to this machine because that's the role of this machine. It's a front end web server. It needs to have that config. And so the policy said, ah, yes, this is an ARC server. It's running Windows. It's got that tag. I need to go and deploy that uh, key vault extension. So you'll see here, it did deploy that extension. And if we were to sign into that server, you would see in the certificate store that the certificate I specified is being synced down. Now, the extension is going to keep checking every hour if that certificate in Key Vault has been updated. So I have a very short uh, expiration policy on this certificate. It's only every month. And Key Vault, of course, has its capability to automatically renew certificates with your CA. So you can kind of imagine a beautiful world where Key Vault is you know, every 20, 25 days going and actually renewing the certificate. The agent installed on the ARC server detects that change, syncs it down, and if you're using an app that's leveraging S channel to uh, bind to those certificates, they'll actually be notified that the certificate was updated and can rebind to the new version of it without rebooting. So it's kind of a seamless end-to-end -end certificate management experience that's all handled here. And in case something were to go terribly wrong, well, you have this other audit policy to go and check if you have any certificates that are at the expiration window of uh, where you need to potentially take manual action. 
Okay, that is that is really really cool. I I like you showed like this is this is something I want now, and I will definitely try this out like immediately after that session. Um, so what I also like is so two two other things I want to add. I mean, like except for having that solution, so you're using instead of um, just using like a policy assigned to a, a subscription or management group or a a resource group, you're also using. Uh, like tags to actually filter and say, okay, this server should have it. This one doesn't need it. So that means I could actually have a server which doesn't have that tag. And for some reason, like in a month or so, I suddenly think, okay, I need that. Like I need, that server needs the certificates as well. Uh, then I would just add that tag or modify the tag depending on how the setup is. And it would go out and suddenly have that policy and get like um, that certificate. Exactly, okay. yeah. And you know you could even have different values on it. So like this is a production server. If you had a dev test one, you could have a different certificate synced down. And you know if the role of that server changed over time, just change the tag. It'll trigger policy to reevaluate, and it will go and push down the changes. Okay. And the other thing you just highlighted was also like you spoke about it before, the managed identity part. So that means it uses the managed identity from that server. So let's and it obviously goes now out and renews all the time. It has access to the key vault. But if I decide that that server is like for somehow not used anymore or whatever, um, or like does not belong to my organization for some reason anymore, I will just go out and remove it from Arc, for example. And at that moment, my guess is it will not have access to the key vault anymore, right? Yeah, you got it. If you were to delete the Arc server representation, it would lose access to that certificate. Or you know, if you found out that server was compromised, you can just go to Key Vault and remove access. It's that easy. It's not like someone can just go add the tag and suddenly they're getting access to whatever they want. You know, there's checks and balances in place through the whole Azure uh, authorization stack. Okay, no, that's cool. Awesome. So let's talk about a few other features that kind of light up uh, in this portal here for Arc servers. Everything I show you is going to be for a single server view, but there's always an equivalent multi-server view. So keep that in mind because if you're in that you know higher level central IT role looking across the organization, the same data is going to be available to you for all the machines in one view. So security, Azure Defender for servers, this is obviously a huge focus of Microsoft, making sure that we enable the best security experiences for your on-premises uh, and cloud resources. You know, we've always offered Azure Security Center for on-premises machines uh, and we're excited to say that when you use uh, Azure Security Center, Azure Defender for servers with an ARC server, you actually get a little bit more value for your money because uh, one of the capabilities that is included with Azure Defender is the vulnerability assessment solution. And so that is going, and if we were actually drill in here, um, when you look at your secure score for the machine and the recommendations available for it, some of these uh, are, going to be something you can't pick up from logs. So things like, hey, you're running uh, Adobe Flash. That's not good. That's no longer supported. Um, and other OS settings that just need to be checked by uh, an additional tool. Well, a license for the vulnerability assessment solutions included with Azure Security Center, but we didn't have a way to push it down to on-prem machines before because it's deployed as an extension. But if you arc enable the server, well, now extensions work. So you'll actually be able to start getting more insights into the security of your on-prem machines just because it's Arc enabled, uh, because we're able to push down that uh, vulnerability assessment solution. And you know it's really easy to. One of the things you know we showed you a fully set up machine, but if we look at this uh, second server here, this is just a, a Linux server I've got uh, that I haven't yet onboarded to it. Recommendations show up in the portal just like they would for. Uh, an Azure VM. And so you'll see here, look, this machine doesn't have a vulnerability assessment solution installed. Uh, of course, you could automate this with policy, but if you're doing one-off stuff, you can just click here and go remediate and be like, oh, well, what do I need to do to you know, be better uh, and assess my machine with more details? Oh, I just need to deploy the scanner, click proceed, off you go. And you know, behind the scenes, what this is doing is it's going and deploying an extension. So that was really easy. And now, you know, in a couple hours, I'll have more information about the security of my servers uh, right here on that security tab. 
All right, that is that was super easy. That I like when, when security stuff is easy. That is that is a good yes. thing. <laughs> Not always the case, but we try our best. Awesome. So you know, other things that work on prem, um, and these are all optional services. So when you think about Arc, Arc itself is the connection to Azure and the ability to see it in the portal, to tag it and deploy extensions. Everything else I'm showing is an optional service that you can choose to use, or if you have something else already in place, that's fine. Uh, you can try it out if you want, or you can just ignore it. That's also totally valid. Um, and so, you know, going down the list here of things that we highlight, you know, update management is a great tool to keep track of which updates are missing on your systems. Um, you know, you'll be able to see the current status from the Windows Update client or your Linux package manager. We honor, you know, the if you're connected to WSUS for Windows or a custom package repository on Linux, we'll make sure that we obey that and only show you those updates which you can install from your configured sources. And you know, you can go and actually say, look, I'm way out of date. I need to go get my January update pushed out. Uh, and you can go and schedule those. Uh, you can do it one off. Uh, you can do uh, regular updates. Like if you want to set up like Sunday 1 a.m. schedule, you can configure whether or not we reboot it. Uh, and of course, you can pick and choose exactly which updates you want to go and push out. One of the nicest things about update management is this pre and post script feature. So if your app needs some uh, TLC before it goes and gets rebooted or when, after you reboot the system, you know you need to make sure that it's actually running correctly. Well, you can actually specify scripts that will be executed before and after the update starts so that you can make sure that your application comes back online and as expected. So that's a free capability of Azure for both hybrid and uh, Azure machines. So definitely take, recommend taking a look at this, even if it's just to get insights on which updates are missing across all your machines. Uh, you know, if you go to the multi-machine view, you would be able to see um, all the updates missing across your enterprise and how many of your machines are missing each of those updates. So it makes it really easy to get that organization-wide view of your update status. Oh wow! Okay, so this is like this is obviously now also the place where I would do like um, like obviously like if I have one server I want to update, I would do it like directly from the one single view uh, we have there. But here I would actually see all my servers, and I, that's also where I would schedule probably uh, updates to a group of servers um, to make sure that they um, uh, are are up to date. And I also saw that you were able to not just say update now, but also schedule it. Um, I guess you can also make it a recurring task, right? Yep. Uh, uh, what I also think, and, and that is like, can you repeat that? Did you say this is free for Azure and Azure like on-prem or Azure Arc machines? It is, yes. So update management is just included with your Azure subscription. Um, you know, when you enable it, you do have to deploy the log uh, analytics agent. That's where it collects its data from. Um, but they have an included uh, quota for that log analytics data to say, look, Update data doesn't take a ton of space, so we'll give you some free quotas so that we can go and collect that information, analyze it, and present it back to you. If oh, we wow. want to stay up to date, that's very important for us. We want to make sure we give you the tools uh, to be as secure as you can be. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is awesome. You cannot imagine how many customers I have seen um, like building and like building their update orchestration um, and tools and to manage all these updates in their environment. And now you're telling me basically I can use that like the Azure Update Management, which I use for my Azure VMs. I can use that on prem, and I don't even pay anything for it. So I, I like just yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, this is a, a great tool now to use. Definitely. Well, cool. So kind of in the same vein, you know, we see a lot of customers using the tags on Arc servers as like a basic level of inventory. Uh, some of them are using it to supplement their CMDBs. Uh, others are, you know, have an existing tag governance strategy for Azure stuff that now they can start applying to on-prem as well. But, you know, in addition to tagging kind of the, I, I want to say physical server, even though it might be virtual, but like the existence of a machine somewhere, you can also enable uh, software asset inventory tracking. And so there's an optional solution available in Azure Automation that goes and keeps track of all the software you've got installed across your machines. And you can optionally even keep track of changes over time. Uh, you know, by default, we're looking at 
uh, packages on Windows and Linux and what services or daemons are running. You can also ask us to monitor specific files for changes or on Windows registry keys. Uh, and this is great because if you're trying to figure out you know, your update strategy for things that don't come from Microsoft, like your line of business apps, well, if we have your version data, then you can actually write a query in Log Analytics and say, hey, find me everyone who's running our internal HR app that's not running the latest version. And you can actually do that all from Azure. And then you can use that information to help build your uh, update strategy and you know, perhaps migration uh, strategy based on the workloads and features you're looking for. So yeah, we're, I think there's a lot of uh, insights you can get from being able to see what is actually running in your enterprise. Yeah, yeah, definitely very handy. Like uh, again, like uh, same thing as I mentioned before, like obviously when we speak about these management technology, we usually think about things which we actually take actions, but even getting these insights like inventory data, like the server exists, we know what operating system it's running on, we know what the update level is, and now also knowing, okay, what applications are actually installed on that machine, or like, let's say if you look at multiple machines in my environment, I think that is absolutely um, fantastic to, to get that overview. And now I, I basically with Azure Arc and like I get it for my Azure VMs, I get it for my on-prem VMs in my home data center, I get it for VMs running in my branch office, my factories, my retail stores, or even at other cloud providers, right? So I have like that one, like the single control plane um, to see all of that. And I think even just without having these actions like update management and policy and all that, which is absolutely awesome, just even having the view, I think like getting the inventory, I think that is what a lot of people are, uh, or customer looking for. And then if you give him also the additional features, again, then to also take action, uh, I think that that is super cool. Definitely. And, you know, the other thing, as I mentioned before, but I'll reiterate here, you know, the beauty of having an ARC interface in the portal is if you're the admin of this machine, you didn't have to go filter for any of this. We did all that for you because all the logs we upload get annotated with the resource ID. So we just know that all of this information is relevant for this particular server, even if for some reason you had two servers with the same computer name. So we, we're really helping make unique identifiers for this data so that we give you the most accurate information every time. Awesome. Um, and you know, kind of on that vein, when we talk about log data in general, having that resource ID also unlocks resource context log access. So if you're thinking about how do I give my server app is access to the logs we collect on our machines. Uh, for hybrid machines, it used to have to be that you would give access to all of the logs that you collect across the log analytics workspace. And that's because, again, we didn't have a way for you to say, like, only these four machines get access because uh, we didn't have an identifier for these uh, hybrid machines. We just had computer names. But when you have ARC installed, the log analytics agent checks uh, the instance metadata service, the API running on the ARC uh, agent and says, hey, we have an ARC resource ID and we'll reply and say, yes, we do, here it is. And they'll just go and attach that to all the logs they send up. Um, and so, you know, if I just do a heartbeat from the log analytics agent, um, if we go and take a look, uh, you'll see here, you know, got the computer name, which you know, could be uh, shared across multiple machines, but we keep scrolling down, you'll see uh, here's the resource ID. This is how we know it's related to this machine. And therefore, if you enable resource context log access on the log analytics workspace, folks who have the right permission on this server can get access to see their logs and only their logs. They don't have to get access to everything. Okay, this is huge because this was exactly one of the questions I had was the role-based access stuff. I mean, you show now that you showed me this, you showed me multiple, like how do I manage multiple machines, but then having access to that specific machine. And my question like really was like for Azure resources, I have like role-based access. And so it looks like I also have role-based access for the Arc machine. So I could say, hey, SharePoint admins, you only see your SharePoint applications uh, or your servers running like SharePoint and I would limit that for that view. And with that, they would also just have access to the, the log analytics data, which they should see and not more. <laughs> yep, you got it. 
Yeah, and I know that's a great point. I should talk about how role-based access control affects an ARC server. So, you know, just like any other ARM resource, we have uh, role-based access control that you can go and assign roles to it. You know, we have built-in roles for, um, you know, uh, here's like that onboarding role who's allowed to go and actually create these machines in your resource group. And we also have like an administrator of uh, ARC servers. Um, but the most important part is this controls access to the metadata in Azure. It is not changing who can actually log into the server on-prem. So it's two different uh, sets of authorization checks. You have your existing you know, local users and groups that control access to RDP and SSH into that machine. And this is separate for that management at scale from the Azure world. So if those two roles don't perfectly align, that's totally fine. You can enable that uh, because there are two different implementations. So in theory, I could like, okay, so I could give like administrator and tell them basically you don't even need the like, let's say Windows access or Linux access on that machine. You just go through the Azure like management experience. You have access to that. Um, of course, they could obviously then probably run um, like the side state configuration and add users and get access. But if, for example, that would work if they would like, let's say network wise, they would not have access to that machine directly. Um, they could go over the Azure experience and actually manage that server. Okay, that, that is cool. Yeah, definitely. And there's also cases where, you know, uh, if you're hosting an app on behalf of another business group or a customer, you know, you might give them view only access. Uh, in the portal and no access on the network. That's totally valid as well. That makes sense. Yeah. And also, like, I to be honest, I don't like logging into servers. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I like servers <laughs> and all that and, and doing that. But, like, if I need to manage, like, a like, large set of servers, I'm just happy if I can do that centralized at one place and just go out and run a script or press a button or whatever it is uh, and, and actually enable that for every every server I want to and not needing to like RTP into that server or SSH in into that server and run something. So I think that that is really cool, really helpful. Definitely. Well, awesome. I just have one last thing I want to show. Um, this is the insights experience. So this is and an optional add-on to Azure Monitor that's gonna go and give you some better analysis of the performance counters of your machine and network connections that machine has both incoming and outgoing. So uh, while this is a web server, you would normally expect a lot of things coming in. This is my demo web server, so I apologize. I didn't fully <laughs> set up inbound connections because I don't browse my demo site often. Um, but you'll see here, my server has 29 unique processes which are making network connections out to other servers. And it groups it by the ports they're talking to and as red line indicates that this was unsuccessful. And that's because I blocked uh, unauthenticated HTTP out of this machine. Um, and if you have multiple servers talking to each other, it kind of builds a graph here. So you can go and figure out like, hey, we want to go decommission this server over there. Is that okay that <laughs> they would talk to this server? Uh, and the dependency graph here kind of helps you build out uh, understanding of who is communicating with that machine. Yeah, very useful. Also very useful for migration scenarios and stuff like that. So um, like, for example, if you want to move, uh, like if you want to migrate servers and you want to like, you obviously don't want to migrate an application server, which still needs to then talk probably to the on-prem environment. And then you have all that traffic going back and forth. <laughs> We probably yeah. want to move both machines at the same time. So this this is also a very helpful view, I guess. Definitely. And another great feature is you know the performance counter, so you can keep track of you know your disk usage, CPU, memory over time. So if you get an incident, someone says, "Hey, my server is running slowly." Well, you don't have to sign in again. You can just go here and look at the historical data and say, "Ah, well, maybe there was a spike at one point." Um, or if you know you're running like a cluster of servers, again, that multi-machine view helps a lot. So if we head over here to the insights experience, now we're seeing all of my servers in uh, the same resource group. So I've got front end, middle tier, and database, and you can see their utilization across all of them. Uh, you know, you could also, since this is being stored as log data, you could write an Azure alert on this. So you could say, hey, shoot me a mail or call this webhook if we find a server that's you know uh, keeps having errors in some sort or is running out of uh, disk space, 
uh, and then being able to go act on that information when you get those alerts. Nice, nice. Well, cool. So that is, uh, you know, the end of my demo here in the portal. Again, this is, we're looking at a single machine. Arc is really designed for the, uh, you know, at scale, long-term configuration of your servers. Uh, it's not necessarily here for your day-to-day uh, -day troubleshooting of an individual machine. It's really designed to help make sure that machine is monitored, it's governed with policy, it's got the right agents installed to enable that monitoring and governance. And of course, uh, you know, from like the inventory perspective, being able to go and tag it and find it alongside all of your resources that you have in Azure. Okay, that that is really cool. Um, you know, I, I really love like what I, what I see here. And one thing I also want to mention now, obviously you mentioned now we looked at this and all in the portal, right? We use the portal to manage all that. But since, I guess, since this is a resource manager, this would also work like some of the features work we're using templates and like using the APIs and stuff like that? Definitely, yeah. So we have PowerShell, we have command line, ARM templates work as well. The only thing a little different about us is since, you know, we require that agent to be on-prem and establish the connection from the server to Azure. Uh, whereas like an Azure VM, you can go and write a template to say, hey, go make me a server. We can't really make your existing server on-prem. It's already there. So the creation of an ARC server is always going to originate from our agent. Uh, and that is that script I showed earlier, where it's going to go and say, connect me to Azure, to this subscription resource group using this identity. Awesome. Awesome. No, this is perfect. This is, uh, thank you very much for that demo. That was uh, a lot of stuff I just learned here. And so that's awesome. Definitely. So one question I have um, is now I saw all of that and um, like I, I obviously want to try out things now. I really want to figure out, okay, what I'm going to do. Um, what do you recommend? Where do where do I go? Yeah, so we have a lot of good resources for you. Um, you know, starting, of course, with our docs. There is a Microsoft Learn module as well for Azure Arc. Uh, so you'll have a quick intro to all of the Arc products that are currently available. Azure Arc Enabled Servers is generally available. Uh, we also have Arc Enabled Kubernetes uh, currently in preview, as well as Arc Enabled Data Services. Uh, and we didn't talk about data services today, but I believe we got another session coming up uh, to talk more in depth about how we're bringing some of the best of Azure's managed database products on premises with Azure Arc. Um, then after Learn, you know, when you're ready to get your hands dirty and start playing around, we have a great site called the Azure Arc Jumpstart. And this is a collection of scenarios that are based on real world experience that we saw from customers during you know, our preview, as well as what we keep hearing from uh, folks who are actively using it. And it's meant to be very practical, ready to go uh, examples. So if we head over to the Jumpstart scenarios here, you can filter by your Arc product. So if we go to Arc servers, you know, it has everything from onboarding. Uh, and this includes both you know, easy onboarding like I showed you, as well as, hey, how do we automate onboarding for something like AWS or VMware, where there's perhaps other tooling that's available to simplify the running of that script on your machines, uh, as well as, you know, kind of going down and uh, looking at specific use cases uh, of Azure Arc and what you might want to configure, like monitoring. And so these include ARM templates that go and set everything up for you if you don't have anything uh, pre-built, uh, as well as you know written guidance for each of the scenarios in case you want to do it yourself and just understand what are we encouraging you to do in this kind of scenario. Okay, that is pretty cool because I mean I want to try things out. That is actually a good place to get actually started and helps me really really quickly set things up and try things and like actually get my my own demo environment basically up and running. Um, no, that's cool. Yeah, we will definitely put the links for this in the description below. So people, if you want to want to actually go out, uh, check out the links underneath this video and you will like we have the links to the learn module documentation uh, and jumpstart as well. So Ryan, do you have any more things you want to show us uh, or talk about? Not today. I think this was a, a really great intro to kind of the architecture and capabilities of Azure Arc. Um, you know, next best step, I think, is really just try it out. Uh, you know, Azure Arc Enabled Servers itself is free. 
you only pay for the optional services that you choose to use with it, like the storage of log data. Um, so I definitely encourage you to go out, install on your server, uh, and see what kind of experiences you can build with it. No, this is awesome. No, Ryan, thank you very much for uh, being uh, on, in this session. I really have uh, like, learned a lot of interesting things. I have really a good view on some of the deep dive stuff we do with Azure Arc enabled servers. And so thank you very much for joining. Uh, for the viewers here, if you want to learn more, obviously, as I mentioned, we have the link in the description of this video. Uh, if you want to watch more videos from our IT Ops Talks hybrid event, check out aka.ms slash IT Ops Talks, and you will find more sessions, as you mentioned, like when it comes to Azure uh, Arc uh, data services, um, Azure uh, Stack HCI, uh, AKS on Azure Stack HCI, Windows Server-related sessions. We have much, much more there. Uh, so please check it out uh, and hopefully see you in the next session.